Welcome to part 12 of the tutorial. Today this is about the display list specifics when it comes to memory and scrolling. So we start by copying the previous part. So I say new folder, part 12, display list, memory and scrolling. Just to make sure I don't break the original example. So the display list is a program in the 16-bit address space of the 65 or 2 and the antic. And the program pointer is a display list pointer, which is an antic. And you can set the start address of the program by writing to the shadow register at 230. And now what you would expect is whatever you write there, there it starts. And if you have something like a loop instruction, then it will loop. So this is the original program and it works fine. And now I show you one of the typical errors that happen. I just moved this program. I advanced the program down the memory line just a few bytes. So I move it down 16 bytes in memory. And I start the program and we see it turns black. Yeah. Hmm. So how come that? Let's see what's in the memory. So we see the display list location. It is 1FFD, which looks fine. And when we look at what is at 1FFD, there is the display list. It also looks fine. And now we see what happens at runtime, because this is what Altera shows us. As you can see, after 1FFD, it displays the three blanks, and then the next address is not what you expect, 2000 something, but it is 1C00. So how come that? Well, the designers of the Antic chip had to save money where possible, and what they decided is that a display list would typically not be very long. Yeah, in our case, you can see that the display list is hardly some 30 bytes. And even with the highest resolution modes, where you have a, a mode line for every scan line, you are still below, let's say, 200 or, or 300 bytes. So the counter that counts from the start of the display list to its end does not have to be very wide. Yeah, it does not have to count to, let's say, 10,000 because no display list is typically 10,000 uh, bytes long. And so they saved some transistors for that counter and as a result a display list must not cross a 1K boundary. Yeah, 1K, that means hexadecimal 400 and this is exactly what happens here. We are at the end of a 1K boundary, the next address would be 2000, which is dividable by 400, and that means instead of going to 2000, which would be the next 1K block, it restarts in the same 1K block, and that is at 1C00. Yeah, and this is uh, one of the typical mistakes. So when you put the display list actually within your program, you have to carefully align your program, or alternatively, you can align the display list to a 1K boundary. Now it should work again, yes, because now the program starts at 1F00 and Matt's inserts now some blanks and the display list again starts at a 1K boundary, so we're out of trouble. Similarly, uh, the counter for the memory scan lines also has a limit and that limit is 4K. So to stimulate the same error, I first put this to something that's dividable by 4K and see if it works. Yeah, it does. And now again, I move it down 16 bytes. And we see there is only the hello world because that still fits in. And then the memory scan pointer also wraps around 
Yeah, and in this case, when we look at the display list, it starts at 3 FFO. The first 16 bytes work out fine. And even the here, it starts fetching data not from 4000, but from 3000. So we can maybe even check that. Let's put some data at 3000. And you see, here is exactly where the memory counter wraps around. Yeah, and similarly, the solution to this problem is again to align the screen memory to 4K boundary. And it will work fine. Yeah. So be careful when you lay out your memory map not to waste too much space with align statements. Carefully put your display list and your screen memory at multiples of 1K, respectively 4K. So let's revert all these errors. Test if the program works again. Yes, it's fine. And what I would like to show you now is hard scrolling or hardware scrolling by changing memory location. So you know that there is the LMS instruction, which you can use to actually um, tell Antic where to fetch data from. And by changing the display list or the start address of that LMS instruction or mentioned in that LMS instruction, you can actually create the impression of scrolling. So to do so, I add another line here. And I say it's an LMS line and I define a new memory location, which I call scroller. I define a new local. And I also do the following. I align it now to the next page boundary. So dividable by 256. And I put a text here. Typos in, how come that? Let's see if it works out. Okay, so that second line claims to be a scroller, but it does not scroll. So what do we do? We call this the display LMS instruction. And we create a loop. And in that loop, we increment now the address, the low part of the address. byte of LMS address. So what does it mean? It starts with a zero because I aligned it to zero here, the low byte. When the loop does an increment, it will increment the value that's written here. That means in the next frame, Antic will not fetch the data from, in this case, it's 2100, but it will fetch the data from 2000 101. So what is the effect? It will not start with displaying the A, but it will start with displaying the space. And when we increment once more, it will display the V. Let's see what it looks like. Ah, this is a qualified label. So this is within the local statement. And here you see Woodson IDE represents these local statements and also the inner structure of the local statement. So you get nice qualified names and visualization. And let's start it. And if you look carefully, and I hope it comes out on the screen cam, you can see there is a text vanishing or appearing and vanishing again. Why? Yeah, because we are far too fast. 
So this is incrementing with every some cycles of the CPU. We have to in add a delay. We add a delay to wait for one frame. So we load the current frame counter. We check if it's still the same value and if it's still the same value, we wait. So this frame counter is incremented every 50th of a second by the vertical blank interrupt. So now we have synchronized the increment with the screen and we can see it's crawling. Now there's a long wait and you see it bangs in at the very first byte and then it scrolls out. Why is that? Well, if we want to the scroller to wrap around correctly, maybe we should first make it longer so we see more scroll text. But to have it wrap around correctly, we should start and end the scroller with a full screen line of blanks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So a screen line is 40 bytes wide. So we make sure we have 40 bytes in front and 40 bytes at the end. And when we scroll this, we can see this scrolling through. And that's the end for this part. And in the next part, I will show you how to make this a soft scroller.